Hey everybody, Spoonfat here, and today we're going to install Jody Cloud, or Jody Cloud, or anyway, a fun sounding name with Cloud in it, and we're going to install it directly, which is usually the easier option to take if you want to install it anyway. Now, uh, Jolie OS or Jolie Cloud is a distro that is like the Chrome OS one, in that it is just one interface, so you don't have a desktop. Um, like background and start menu and stuff like that. So yeah, Jolie Cloud is a um, distro that is like Chrome OS in that it has um, one interface. So it's not uh, a desktop background and and, and applications uh, like shortcuts sitting on the desktop or exploring the file system. I actually don't know if you can can explore the file system. I think you can. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's um, uh, it's new. It's innovative. Uh, it's small. It's fast. It's easy to uh, customize. It's not new to code. Install. And just like that, we're installing. Jolie Cloud. I've no. I don't know what they based it on. I think they just um, hand coded it, or maybe they started with something and then uh, built off of that. But yeah, I think it looks very well, sweet and sugary, as I put it. But it does work well on uh, netbooks and. <coughs> Um, it works well on netbooks, uh, on probably on tablets as well. It's a bit too big uh, for smartphones. Um, and on the subject of smartphones, we, we all know that you have a Windows Phone. We know you have iOS, which is the iPhone. And we know you have Android. Um, plus, there was one more, Mego, I think it is, which is the one Nokia uses. But Mozilla, uh, from Mozilla Firefox and Mozilla Thunderbird and Songbird, they have said that they are working on a uh, OS for smartphones as well, and they're calling it Boot to Gecko. And yeah, uh, I'm actually curious as to what they will do and what they can do. I mean, the products that they make for smartphones actually work very, very well. Uh, the Firefox browser for uh, Android works like a charm. It, it really incorporates the, uh, the, like the touch screen mechanics of the phone in that you they use screen real estate very well. <coughs> And so yeah, I can't. I cannot wait to actually make a prototype or an alpha, and I will uh, show it to you here uh, through probably smartphone emulator kind of thing. I have no idea how I'm gonna do it. Hmm. Oh, cool! You get a real cloud as well. Oh, that's pretty awesome! I didn't know they made it so. Well, um, if you get Jolly Cloud and you install it, you can actually go to my.jolycloud.com and log in there and get your own like system there. You can have access to your system. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like like I said, you you don't have a you have everything in one thing like. You can see it as one big browser with a standard home page that you cannot click away. That's that's sort of like how it is. But it, it works really well. It looks very well. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's perfect for netbooks and tablets. Uh, Ubuntu was also doing one for smartphones, I think. Or maybe somebody did one for smartphones. I have no idea. But I think... Linux should be more present on the smartphone market as well. There are loads of possibilities. Ooh. 
there are loads of possibilities uh, that that can happen or that, that are present for Linux to be on smartphones in terms of the user interface and uh, God knows what else you can do and I st strongly support the fact uh, that you can just have a root access to your smartphone I mean it's your smartphone why the hell should you not have root access to your own device I mean can you imagine buying a laptop with Linux installed and you do not have root access on it you cannot have root access on your laptop so that means that you cannot install new applications you cannot update the software you cannot do anything that you want to do with your system so why the hell can we not do it with smartphones I mean if I wanna uh, have like I don't know a Wi-Fi scanner on my phone I want a Wi-Fi scanner on my phone I do not see why it is so difficult to be um, yeah, to have a rooted phone as it as well it's almost installed already it's gone pretty fast bully, bully. Oh no, that was bully bully if you don't know that then that's okay but bully was a uh, snowman with red nose you can look it up on uh, YouTube. I think you'll find it. Just a cartoon from my youth. Um. Uh, as for the distros that I'm gonna do, I have Open Zeus lying around. I have Scientific Linux lying around, and that's basically it. I think I might do FreeBSD or uh, or no, I. I yet to do Fedora as well so I have like four maybe five left <coughs> and after that I will do the command line interface ones and but that will be a project on its own actually um, I will be doing Arch Linux I will start that project and then we'll delve into the world of Linux how do you use Linux or where do you get the apps how do you install the apps and uh, for that I will be using Ubuntu um, Magia for, for KDE users and Arch Linux those are the three that I'm gonna use and Arch Linux will be a side project all in its own we'll, where we'll be covering how to uh, basically use the command line interface of, of Linux Something like this, and I think that the command line interface is still a scary place to be um, for a lot of people, but it's also a great place to be because you can do a lot of things there that just take a lot of. Uh, mouse clicking or orienting uh, when you want to do it in a desktop environment. Uh, simple, uh, simple example is if you want to cut and paste something in a command line, you can do that in one line with one command. And if you want to do it in uh, the user interface, you have to open up uh, places or at least a file browser. You have to go to the place where the file resides. Then you have to right click the file. Then you have to uh, select cut and then you have to go to the destination where you want the file to be placed and then you have to right click and select paste that's a lot of actions uh, if you think about it in in terms of a command line interface it's one line just one line that's I don't know a couple of keystrokes and then you hit enter and you're done so yeah that's that's why you can uh, it doesn't hurt to learn the command line interface and yesterday I've also thought of a sort of retro project to do and that was just for fun uh, I'm not gonna do old Linux distros because that's way too difficult because a lot of them uh, don't support like virtual machines and stuff like that and then I'll be screwed but I can easily no, not easily but I can do uh, MS-DOS 6.0 uh, Windows 3.11 Windows 95 and uh, that's that's what I will do J just for a laugh you know just to see um, 
what it looked like in, in the early days, early 90s, around that. And Windows 95 came out, of course, in 95. So, uh, yeah, I thought that would be cool, cool little thing to do. You know, just uh, have a little bit of fun with, uh, uh, with the old, old, old environments, see where it all started. And where we are now, if you put them side by side, not only in terms of like system requirements, but um, also the look and feel, how it worked. It's pretty funny. If you see uh, that I had like 2 MB of RAM in my first computer, and that was considered a lot back then. And right now, you need to have at least 4 gigs to 6 gigs of memory in order to make your computer do anything. Which is insane if you think about it. Hmm. Well, this installing takes a little longer than I thought. It's hanging on 79%, uh, so I will pause the video. And uh, we will continue when it's uh, ready to go. So now it's done. Let us restart. Yes. Let's boot up Jolie. Should boot up instantly. At least I hope so. Cool little splash screen. And here we are. Just log in with the credentials that you made. Sign in and here we are. Now, you need to make a Jolly Cloud account, or you can do it with Facebook. Uh, let's assume you don't have Facebook, because that's easier. Alright, one thing you need for the distro, but I think that's pretty obvious, is internet, because everything works through the internet with this browser, um, or with this uh, OS, I mean, sorry, this distro. But, um, if you associate this computer, you can, like, uh, do it will help them to organize your accounts because you can go to another account and then say that you have a different thing there well I have a netbook so next and what I have is a Samsung uh, minus I that is it considered the laptop then? I do not consider my Mine is not in there. All right, then. It is a netbook. It is a Samsung. It's other. It's a SF310. Device name. Uh, that, that's fine. You're welcome. Now then. Then now then 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 then. then. This is all there is to it <laughs> and that sounds a bit weird but this is it this is your whole desktop and I have no idea ah oh, this is the background what you can have on it so you can do this and it will get the desktop and now we have that as a background let's see if they have a nice one to Set as our background. Oh, this is cool. Something like that. Let's close this. 
Oh, you can't close it. You need to have it. Oh, I was going to say. So, these are the pages, and everything is on here. So, you can have your local apps, like calculator, text editor, that's all local. And this is your file browser. This is what it looks like, and this is the cloud, like your normal desktop, and this is the file browser. So you have indeed a file browser, which would make sense, of course, but still. Um, uh, so if you go back to dashboard, these are local settings. I'm just gonna uh, make my monitor a bit bigger. Yes, like so. Oh yeah. Um, what do I need to show you? Well, as you can see, you have Chromium browser on here. You have Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Flickr, YouTube, uh, Google Docs. Those are all uh, like uh, shortcuts to the services. Um, you have a couple of games, news, Wikipedia. I have no idea what this is. Uh, just click on it, and you'll find out. Um, you know there are and if you want to have new stuff you can just go click on that nice huge green plus and you can add all these these are like the featured ones but let's say you want something I uh, music you just go there and you can add Groove Shark, for example. And you can go to my page in Groove Shark uh, and go to my video about Groove Shark. So you can uh, join me in my project. Uh, you have some native apps for Jolie OS, which like um, are such configured that Jolie knows what to do with it. Um, as well as add-ons which help you like the HTML5 audio and video to help you with getting the uh, displaying the audio and video in an HTML5 manner because this is all part of a browser you know that's that's why they have the add-ons um, like Java uh, they even have wine on here so you can run uh, Windows apps now, these are your activities on what you do, what other people do, what, you know, stuff like that. And it's a bit of a social thing. Mm -hmm. This is your also your file browser. Uh, you can go and uh, just be in your documents, basically. Your home folder. That's it. That's the only thing you can go to. Uh, and then you have your Dropbox account, which I will be doing a video on another time. And your account, of course, in this device, you can do all kinds of things. You can do app syncs, uh, which, like, you have the same apps wherever you go. And my public page is my .com, uh slash poonfed. And, you know, if I go there and I log in, I can always get all my apps and everything um, so I, I will be setting this up uh, to you know to share with you guys I, I should say so if you have Jolie Cloud you know you can uh, be my friend on uh, Jolie Cloud that's that's cool share apps or share things or, or you know what whatever, whatever. Uh, there's nothing much I can say about this other than this is very self-explanatory and yeah, th this is just it. If you want to see how the browser works, this is how the browser works. You can go back to this home tab uh, and then let's say Facebook. And you have Facebook. Um, and if you want to close some something, you just click there. And uh, that's it. That is it. Well, I already...
already have that, so do not worry. And uh, this is, well, I think the best browser or no best distro you can have on a smaller computer because it's very compact. Everything is here, and you don't need to like right click stuff and as you can see it's really a browser that you can do inspect element and you can see stuff see this is how it looks um so, so yeah uh i would suggest to have fun with this and, and at least give it a try you know try it out and um yeah there's nothing more i can say I, it's a cool distro it's nice it's new it's innovative it looks beautiful uh and you can do a lot with it these will automatically grow uh, as they as you get more and more pages and i think you can um i think you can set No, this is just the background. Hmm, I thought maybe you could like change the layout of uh, how it looks, but no. So ah, okay, now that's that's too bad. Thought maybe you could change this, you know. Cool. No. Okay. That's it. Um. Yeah. I've no, I've nothing more to say on this other than for you to have fun with this distro. Um. And uh, I will be customizing mine, and you can share stuff with me on Jody Cloud. That's that's cool. That's fine. Uh.